In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, to prepare ourselves to celebrate, let us take a moment to repent again of all our sins. Have mercy on us, O Lord. For we have sinned against you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy. And grant us your salvation. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. We are praying today in Holy Mass for peace between Russia and the Ukraine and other countries at war, for Pope Francis, all bishops and priests, for the intentions of Carmel, of the Redemptorists, our families, friends, and benefactors, and those recommended to our prayers, for the repose of the soul of Sister Mary Grace of the Sacred Heart, Father Sean Lunny and Myrtle Mabel Fourie, for the souls in purgatory, for the conversion of sinners, and the reign of God's kingdom on earth. Glory to God in the highest. Peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. For you are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who by the abundance of your grace 
Give increase to the peoples who believe in you. Look with favor on those you have chosen and clothe with blessed immortality those reborn through the sacrament of baptism. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In those days when the rulers and elders and scribes saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated common men, they wondered, and they recognized that they had been with Jesus. But seeing the man that had been healed standing beside them, they had nothing to say in opposition. But when they had commanded them to go aside out of the council, they conferred with one another, saying, What shall we do with these men? For that a notable sign has been performed through them is manifest to all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and we cannot deny it. But in order that it may spread no further among the people, let us warn them to speak no more to anyone in, the, in this name. So they called them and charged them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered them, whether it is right in the sight of God to listen to you rather than to God, you must judge. For we cannot but speak of what we have seen and heard. And when they had further threatened them, they let them go, finding no way to punish them because of the people. For all men praised God for what had happened. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I will thank you, Lord, for you have answered me. I will thank you, Lord, for you have answered me. Give praise to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song. He was my savior. There are shouts of joy and salvation in the tents of the just. Thank you, Lord, for you have answered me. The Lord's right hand has done mighty deeds. His right hand is exalted. The Lord's right hand has done mighty deeds. I shall not die, I shall live, and recount the deeds of the Lord. The Lord punished me, punished me severely, but did not hand me over to death. I will thank you, Lord, for you have answered me. Open to me the gates of justice. I will enter and thank the Lord. This is the Lord's own gate, where the just enter. I will thank you, for you have answered, and you are my Savior. I will thank you, Lord, for you have answered me. Alleluia. 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 This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice in it and be glad. Alleluia. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. When Jesus rose early on the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, from whom he had cast out 
seven demons. She went and told those who had been with him as they mourned and wept. But when they heard that he was alive and had been seen by her, they would not believe it. After this, he appeared in another form to two of them as they were walking into the country. And they went back and told the rest, but they did not believe them. Afterwards, he appeared to the eleven themselves as they sat at table, and he upbraided them for their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they had not believed those who saw him after he had risen. And he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to the whole creation. The gospel of the Lord. Praise the last chapter of Mark's Gospel has been very controversial right back to the early church because it is recognized by all the, those who study these things in great depth. Right away it was recognized that the first eight verses are different from all the rest. And the first eight verses uh, are considered to be the final part of what was written by Mark. The story of the empty tomb and of the angel's message. He has risen, he is not here. And then it concludes on a very strange note. It says... And the women came out, having encountered the angel in the tomb. The women came out and ran away from the tomb because they were frightened out of their wits. And they said nothing to a soul, for they were afraid. And in the critical text, then there's dot, 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 because it just stops. And then this second part, which we had heard this morning, from verses 9 to 20, is a conclusion which was written after Mark had stopped his gospel for whatever reason. Many people think he stopped because he was overcome by what he was writing about and aware of what all this implied, that hearing this news, people had to make a decision about Jesus. So this conclusion goes into the details that were well known in the early Christian community about the resurrection and about Mary Magdalene and the final commendation or yeah, final mandate to the disciples. And of course, it is uh, treated as part of the gospel and is presented as part of the gospel, but the authorship is different. But the inspiration is still there. And it does tell us two things of great importance. First, it tells us in a more blunt way about the disbelief of the eleven and the hardness of their hearts. How difficult it was. So, like on the first Easter Sunday, they, the, the disciples, especially the twelve, were not running around delighted and they were just couldn't make head nor tail of it. They were so dumbfounded, so, so amazed that this is what Jesus must have meant. So they found it very hard. And of course that echoes with us, with modern people, 
that people find it very hard to take this in, to really get the message of the resurrection. Uh, but the second thing is also extremely important. The, the mandate to proclaim the good news to all creation. So the gospel, the, the, the story of Jesus has to be presented as good news. Of course there is this horrible massacre of Jesus through the crucifixion. But the real heart of the gospel lies in the triumph over the cross, the triumph over suffering, the triumph over sin and death. And so it has to be good news for all of us, all of the time. But it does also face us, as the earlier truncated version of Mark says, it faces us with a challenge, with a choice. And we see, we see this working out in the lives of the disciples shortly after, like when Peter and John cured that lame man in the temple. And it's summed up in that phrase that's attributed to both of them, which should be attributable to all of us. We cannot but speak of what we have seen and heard. And as his disciples, we cannot but share what we experience by our words, by our style of life. Everything must proclaim Jesus is risen, he is alive, he is with us. We make our prayer that we will have the courage to live like that today. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink.
So let us pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord <coughs> Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these Paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but uh, in this time above all, to praise you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. And so, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy. holy. Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. You are indeed holy, O Lord. And all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered, to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood. The blood of the new and eternal covenant, uh, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins.
do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the offering of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Stephen, our bishop, Sylvester, his auxiliary, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Uh, through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. As Jesus taught us, so we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, 
we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen.
All of you who have been baptized in Christ have put on Christ. Alleluia. Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant that those who were pleased, you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mass is ended. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in the day of battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who wander through the world, Seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Amen.